And hello to our Channel 9 viewers. I'm Brian Keller, and of course I'm joined today by Soma, who runs the engineering team that uh, ships Visual Studio and Team Foundation Server. Certainly no stranger to Channel 9. Thanks for being on again. Good to be back here, Brian. Good to see you. And uh, congratulations on another launch, uh, successful launch of Visual Studio and, and all the associated products that go with that, Team Foundation Server and .NET Framework. Thank you. It's, it's an exciting time, exciting time for all of us here at Microsoft uh, with the products that we are coming out today. Uh, but hopefully it's also an exciting time for uh, our customers and developers out there who are thinking about like, you know, hey, what tools that they should be using to build modern applications. Absolutely. So, so several of our viewers probably watched you uh, during the keynote just a few minutes ago. I wanted to uh, get to some of the news that you've talked about, including Visual Studio Online and Monaco and some of the other capabilities you announced. But before that, I don't want to lose sight of the fact that we're here to launch Visual Studio 2013 and TFS 2013. So let's spend some time going over that release. A lot of people probably already using it since it RTM'd in uh, October. A couple of weeks ago, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's talk, let's talk first about maybe some of the, the platform alignment, because Visual Studio has always been aligned with helping developers ship great software on Microsoft platforms. A lot of platforms at the company these days. What are some of the top platforms that you think about in terms of helping developers to build great applications with Visual Studio? Got it. So as always, like you said, Visual Studio is all about making sure that we provide an integrated tool set for you to be able to target uh, the latest and greatest platform technologies and be able to take advantage of that in your applications. Mm -hmm. So along those lines, we got a, a number of new things and new functionality, new features and new tools that we are delivering as part of Visual Studio 2013. For example, if you want to build an app targeted at Windows 8.1, let's say, particularly for the App Store, we got new tools like Memory Profiler and Energy Profiler and the like that really are geared towards helping you build what I call five-star applications for the App Store. Great. Now let's say you're interested in building uh, a service or an app on Windows Azure. First of all, we got a first-class tooling uh, support in Visual Studio 2013 for Windows Azure. But more importantly, one of the features that you know we are excited about, I'm excited about, I should say, is the remote debugging mm. that you can do right from within Visual Studio uh, on a live Azure site. Now, you may want to do it on your staging environment or production environment, but you can, like, you know, sitting within ID within Visual Studio, you can go set a breakpoint and walk through and debug. Uh, uh, Windows Azure application. Almost That's like some, it's a local machine. Yeah, really. almost it's like yeah. a local machine kind yeah. of thing, right? And this is something that I know that our customers have been asking us for, and we are very excited about what we've been able to do that here in this time frame. That's okay? great. Now, if you're a person who is building a business application, let's say, and you want to think about like, hey, what does a modern business application look like? How do I think about like, you know, social and, uh, you know, looking at different data sources? and other things that I want to sort of capture in my business application, working with Windows Azure and Office 365 and CRM Online, we got a new project type or a project template in Visual Studio called the Cloud Business Application. So that's really geared towards people who want to have an easy way to go build the next generation business application using all the assets that I talked about. That's something that is new in Visual Studio 2013. So across the board, whether you're building an application for the client or whether you're building an application for the cloud, or whether you're building a client or device connected you know, to the service kind of application, we got fantastic set of tools in Visual Studio 2013 taking advantage of the latest and greatest platform technologies. That's great, and I imagine it's a full-time job just keeping track of all the different platforms <laughs> that we need to support with Visual Studio, but, but you're doing a terrific job. Uh, the other thing that I want to talk about, of course, Visual Studio has always been about personal developer productivity, about helping me get in there, and write code faster, write high-quality code. Um, I know this is like asking you what your favorite child is, but I'm going to do it anyway. Do you have any favorite features there for personal developer productivity? Sure. So the first thing I would say is like, hey, if you're a developer, you know, chances are you're going to be spending a ton of your time sitting inside the IDE. It's almost like, you know, hey, you live in your house and you really want to, you know, have the most comfortable environment in your house, mm -hmm. right? For, an, for a developer, the IDE is their house, literally, right? That's mm -hmm. where they spend a vast majority of their time. So we always think about like, hey, what should we do to make that experience both pleasant as well as highly productive for the developer. And along those lines, we got some you know, cool new things coming out in Visual Studio 2013. There are two, 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 two uh, tools or two sort of you know, functionality that is new that I'm excited about. One is what we call Peak, 
the other is what we call code lens. Mm. Both are geared towards giving you information about the code that you are working on right then and there in context, in situ kind of thing, right. Peak talks to you about like, you know, gives you information about the particular piece of code. It could be a method, it could be a class, you know, giving you all kinds of information about that right then and there in context so that you know what you are going through. And code lens gives you information on artifacts that surround the piece of code. Could be like, you know, change sets like, you know, hey, who changed this piece of code last time? When did they check in? You know, hey, what tests have been run against this code? When were the tests run? How did the test do? Did they pass, fail? So a set of information surrounding the code is what you get through code lens. And both are what I call productivity enhancing features that we are delivering in Visual Studio 2013. I, lo the, I love those features because they really surface at your fingertips information that has always been in Visual Studio and TFS, right. but you usually have to spend a lot of time going to, you, you know, just have to You it. just have to crawl your way around, like, yep. you know, to figure out that where that information is and somehow get it all together. Mm -hmm. And instead of you having to do all that hard work, we said, let's do that work for you and present that information to you right then and there inside the IDE when you're there. Love it. Right? Then the other thing that I'm personally excited about is what we call this connected IDE. Mm. Because we have Visual Studio, a set of tools on the client, and we got Visual Studio Online, a set of services on, that we deliver on the cloud, and they are staying connected all the time, we have interesting new scenarios that we can enable. And one of those things is what I call uh, letting you roam your settings along with you. For example, right, most people, what they do is, like I said before, IDE is where you want to spend the most time, so you're going to like, you know, customize the heck out of it to ensure that you feel good about the environment that you're going to be working with. The problem is when you happen to go to another machine or a different environment, it's a it's a different environment, right? Uh, and in the past, you would have had to like spend countless number of hours and time trying to recreate the customization that you've already done. Mm -hmm. But instead, wouldn't it be nice if we can somehow magically like, you know, let that roam with you so that you feel like, you know, hey, no matter what machine I'm working on or what environment I'm in, it's the same sort of, you know, uh, IDE that I love and that I'm used to. And if I can recreate that for you, that's a huge productivity enhancer. And we do that with Visual Studio 2013. That's great. Uh, finally, very near and dear to my heart is, of course, how we, you know, help teams uh, embrace from the requirements all the way out to shipping software, mm -hmm. what we call the application lifecycle. Uh, lots of new capabilities that we're shipping as part of this release as well. Um, any that particularly jump out at you that you're seeing customers get excited about? First of all, I think the, I want to underscore one word you said. There's a lot of new functionality in application mm -hmm. lifecycle management that we're delivering with Visual Studio 2013 and Team Foundation Server 2013. So let me just a few that come to my mind. Let me pick a few that come to my mind. Sure. First and foremost, we worked a, a lot with Windows Server and System Center this past year. Mm -hmm. So between Team Foundation Server, Visual Studio, System Center, and Windows Server, we've enabled a bunch of DevOps scenarios in on-premises world. Mm -hmm. That's, a, I think, you know, a good step forward. Okay. Then, if you think about, like, you know, hey, everybody is talking about Agile, Agile this and Agile that, if you're into agile project management. We've got you know, support for hierarchical workflows so that you can look at your backlog and your work items in a hierarchical way to help you navigate through complex projects. Okay? Git, that's something that like, you know, every developer is using in one way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And we said, like, you know, hey, we want to embrace it deeply, both in Visual Studio and in Team Foundation Server, so that, like, you know, hey, no matter whether you want to use Git on the front end or at the back end, we absolutely embrace that and support you on that. Take release management, for example. We talked about like you know, in-release a few months ago. Mm -hmm. It's a sort of technology and a product that we acquired from, from another company. Now that we are delivering as part of Visual Studio 2013 that provides you with a rich set of uh, release management capabilities. Okay, so whether you're talking about project management, whether you're talking about, oh, team collaboration, mm -hmm. how can I forget this, team rooms, right? right? That's course. a brand new thing that we are delivering in Visual Studio 2013. And the notion being that, you know, hey, if you have a development team, sometimes they are physically together, mm -hmm. sometimes they are geographically distributed. But no matter where the physical location of the team is, we want to create this concept of a team room so that we enable teams to collaborate in some fundamentally interesting and important ways. And Team Room is all about that. So whether it's about team collaboration or whether it's about release management or agile project management, you know, we got a, a whole new set of functionality coming in 
team foundation server 2013 and registered 2013. That's great. And I've noticed people on your own team, even though most of the people in, in this building who work on Visual Studio, they happen to be uh, co-located in within their own physical team rooms. I've noticed a lot of them using team rooms as a way to communicate because it means if you're in the middle of writing some code, I'm not going to walk over to your desk and bug you. I can just leave a message in the team room and when you get ready, you can come back to me. So that's great. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, about a year ago, we were on Channel 9 and we were discussing the release of Visual Studio 2012. And since then, you've shipped several updates. In fact, as of today, people can download Visual Studio 2012 Update 4. Yes. Uh, is this kind of the way moving forward? Should people expect this around the 2013 release as well? Absolutely. Last year, you know, if you remember, if you go back to Visual Studio 2012 launch, mm -hmm. we talked about how we want to get to a stage where we are delivering value on an ongoing basis to our customers. Mm -hmm. And we've delivered on that with Visual Studio 2012 update one, two, three, and like you said, today with update four. And that's absolutely the path that we want to continue moving forward as well. Whether we are working on a box product in Visual Studio, or whether we are working on a set of services that we deliver from the cloud in Visual Studio Online, we want to get on a faster cadence than what we've been in the past, mm -hmm. where we really want to be able to uh, deliver value to you as frequently as we can, as opposed to waiting for some big brouhaha milestone kind of thing. <laughs> In fact, I would say Visual Studio Online, uh, to take Team Foundation servers, we've already been on a three-week cadence. Every three weeks, we sort of update the servers, we put out new features and the like. So we are sort of you know, all getting towards what I call a faster delivery and uh, cadence. And in some sense, it's no different than what we are trying to do with Visual Studio and Team Foundation server and Visual Studio Online and everything else that we have, mm -hmm. where we really expect, where, where our customers want to be in a world where they are highly agile, and fast and sort of delivering value on an ongoing basis. So we not only want to enable that with what we are doing, but we want to operate uh, the same way as well. That's great, that's great. So uh, we've mentioned it a couple times. Let's get to some of the big news from today's launch, okay. which is uh, Visual Studio Online. A lot of people hearing about Visual Studio Online today for the first time. If I'm a developer out there and I'm hearing about Visual Studio Online, how should I think about what, what this really means to me? Sure, first of all, the, the simplest way to think about Visual Studio Online is it's a set of finished services, developer services, that we deliver on Windows Azure that works hand in hand with Visual Studio to give you the best development experience for cloud development and devices development. Okay. That, that's what it's all about, right? Okay. So it's a it's a it's a set of services on the cloud. You know about Visual Studio, which is a client side tools. Mm -hmm. Think about the marriage of the two to give you a great holistic developer experience. Okay, and I know a lot of people have been using Team Foundation Service, which is our cloud-hosted version of Team Foundation Server, and now that becomes a part of Visual Studio Online? That's absolutely a part of Visual Studio Online, but Visual Studio Online is bigger than that. Right, so you've mentioned a couple of parts of that. Part of it is the, the roaming profile settings, mm -hmm. is part of Visual Studio Online, the old Team Foundation Service capabilities. Um, anything else that's part of Visual Studio Online sure, people should be aware of? Absolutely. So first of all, with TFS servers, mm -hmm. think about Visual Studio Online as sort of evolving that to the next step. Mm -hmm. And the simplest way to think about it is, if you want to take team collaboration to the cloud, whereby you can dramatically reduce the friction for people to get access to team collaboration features, that's what that uh, hosted Team Foundation service is all about. Okay. Okay. In addition to that, we got a couple other services, right? We got an elastic load testing service. So if you want to be able to Increase the, load increase the load for your testing or decrease or whatever you want to do in mm -hmm. an elastic, friction-free way and be able to do it on the cloud, Elastic Load Testing Service helps you do that. Okay. We got a build service on the cloud. So you want to sort of you know, kick off a build on the cloud, you can go do that now. Now these three services, so Team Foundation Service, Elastic Load Test Service and Build Service, we are delivering that as public preview today. Okay. Okay. In addition to that, there are a couple other services that we are delivering today in what I call private preview. Okay. The first one that comes to my mind is application insights. Now, if you sort of take a step back and think about like, you know, hey, what does the developer need to do today? They think about like, you know, hey, an idea that they want to implement, and they want to figure out the best possible way to translate that idea into a reality. They want to deploy the application that they've built, but more importantly, once they finish deploying, they want to monitor what's happening to the application, who's using it, how is it being used, who's sort of you know, having a good experience, who's mm -hmm. not having good experience. They want to get insights from that monitoring 
and then be able to use that information to go back and make the application better, right? right. So that's sort of really the workflow that every developer is going through. And so if you take that view, you know, some people call it DevOps, some people call it application lifecycle, but sort of a holistic view of what the developer needs to do. We felt that, you know, hey, we needed to deliver a solution for our developers to think about how they can get uh, the level of insight that they need on the application that they are building. So the App Insight service, if I have to sort of explain that in simple words, I would say it's a service that gives you a 360 degree telemetry view hmm. on your application. Things like performance data, usage data, crash data, exception data and the like. Everything that you need to know about your application and how well it is doing or not doing is what this App Insight service is giving you as a developer. That's great, and, and there's a lot of analytic solutions on the market, but what I really enjoyed out of the keynote demo was seeing how I can go straight from an exception that Application Insights is telling me about, right back to the code within Visual Studio that shows me the line of code that was firing, and then the reverse is also true, so that's me going from ops to dev, and also if I push a release from dev over to ops, mm -hmm. I get to see that on the timeline of how I'm monitoring, yep. so mm -hmm. really tying it back to the application lifecycle, I think that's going to be hugely valuable to not just developers, but operations teams as well. Right. So that's being delivered today as a, as a sort of a private preview mm -hmm. and it's an invite only preview kind of thing. So if you're invited, if you're interested, let us know and then we'll figure out how to get you access to that kind of thing. But that's one thing that we're delivering today. Okay. And then the other thing that we are delivering today in private preview is what I call Monaco and it's a code name, Monaco. Visual Studio Online Monaco. Got it. Okay. Now what that is, it's really a lightweight development environment mm -hmm. that is browser based and it is complementary to all the rich uh, IDE and tools environment that you have in Visual Studio. Okay, okay, so similar to the NAPA tooling that we've announced in the past. It is very similar to NAPA. Basically, NAPA, NAPA is an instance of Monaco. Ah, That's how you okay. want to think about it, right? Got it. In other words, Monaco is this browser-based development environment mm -hmm. that, is, that you can run on any browser on any device, okay? And this one, uh, Today what we are launching is a preview of Monaco that helps you target Windows Azure websites. Now in the past what we've done is we've taken that lightweight development environment and integrated it with Office 365 for you to be able to customize and do some Office 365 app development. Mm -hmm. We've done the same with IE for you to be able to get to the browser and have a development environment for your browser application. Mm -hmm. We've done the same with SkyDrive. If you want to be able to edit your source code files, that you stored on SkyDrive, you use uh, Monaco technology, mm. right? So it's a, it's a technology that we want to embed with every platform that we have to give you that lightweight uh, development environment, which is a complementary to what we do in Visual Studio. Because right. Visual Studio, the way to think about it is, it's a rich, all-powerful, end-to-end tooling environment for any application targeted at any platform. And we think there is enough value for a lightweight environment to go hand-in-hand -hand with that for a certain set of development tasks, and that's what Monaco is all about. That's great. So it's very similar to what the Office team has done, where I can edit a, a Word document from the web, but if I really want that full power of the rich client, I can always open that in the Microsoft right. Word, of course. And the other thing is both Monaco and Visual Studio are going to be connected to Visual Studio Online on the back end. So they use the same services from the cloud mm -hmm. for whatever you know additional capabilities that they want to be able to deliver to the developer. Great, that sounds outstanding. So um, if there's one thing that you can leave our Channel 9 audience with uh, following today's announcements, what is that? I would say today is a new era for Visual Studio. Okay, mm -hmm. we, We've come from a world, if you sort of go back to the history of Visual Studio, we started with a client-side development tool. And then we said we have a client-side development tool and a server-side technology in Team Foundation Server. Mm -hmm. And we are taking the next big step forward in terms of saying, hey, we got a set of client-side tools, we got a lightweight development environment, the browser that's complementary to this, we got a set of services from the cloud, and these things are all connected to each other to deliver a holistic development experience for you that starts with the cloud and encompasses all the devices that you are, care about. So that's sort of you know, the one message if I want to leave with, but I'm a greedy guy, so I have a <laughs> second message that I want to leave you with. Okay. okay. With Windows Azure, with uh, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Online, and MSDN. We really have the tools, the resources, the information, the services, access to platform technologies, 
and a cloud development platform for you to truly do what you need to do in terms of moving to the cloud and going through this transformation of services and devices that we as well as the rest of the world are all going through. Great, fantastic. Well, uh, folks can go get started over at visualstudio.com. Soma, we'll be excited to see what your team comes out with uh, next, but I hope you're taking a little time off now that you've shipped, and thanks for being on Channel 9. Absolutely, thank, thank you. you.